I want to lift up a thought on today with the help of the Holy Spirit entitled, I'm Coming Out. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm coming out. Amen. Now, somebody ought to have been shouting right there because this is your day. This is your day of deliverance. You've been waiting and you've been trying to figure out what's going to happen. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out today. I know what the devil said. The devil thought he had me, but God's got my back. I'm coming out today. Regardless of how tough it may be and how rough it may be, I'm coming out because God is going to make sure that I come out on today. Hello, somebody. So that's shouting news by itself. There is eager anticipation that God's about to do something awesome in this place. And I just want you to know that God is in this room on today. And God is saying, if you would just trust me and believe in me, God said, I'll take you places you've never been before. I'll bring you out of things that you've got yourself into, but you've got to learn how to put your hand in my hand. And so I just want you to know this is a, a probably a two-part message, so I don't expect to get very far on today because God has some complex stuff that he wants us to look at in the message on today. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. Now, I want to make sure we understand that coming out does not mean we're coming out the closet with anything. I, I just want to be clear on that because if you come out the closet, we got the Bible, we're in the right place, we can make sure you understand. Help me somebody. You know, during the last uh, seven to ten days, the President of the United States, and praise God that God has uh, put a person of color in, uh, in the White House. But now that he's in the White House, he needs those in the church house to pray for him. Do I have a witness here? And not only must we pray for him, but we must learn how to pray for each other. Do I have a witness? Now, pray does not mean P-R-E-Y. It means P-R-A-Y. Okay, y'all going to get quiet now. But Last seven to ten days, the president introduced uh, what we call, uh, Mr. Bynum, a stimulus package. And the package has the intent or design, if you will, to break the spiraling economy and to bring us up out of what they call this financial chaos that we're now in. And what's interesting about that, Sister Horton, is that uh, this, this package or this stimulus package uh, contains some 600 plus pages of information that says, in essence, if we do these things, there is a good chance, underscore a good chance, that we will come out. Do I have a witness here? I've learned, Dick and Duncan, that early in life that when I'm faced with trouble, the government is not the person that I want to bring me out of anything. I wish I could get some help in here on today. Lest we forget the Great Depression, lest we forget the gas crisis back in the 70s, lest we forget all the crises that we have endured in the last 100 years, which says that when we have allegedly got out, we end up back again due to greed and misfortune. Do I have a witness here? But today, my brothers and sisters, when I come out, I, I need assurance and I need insurance that my coming out means that I will never get back in. Do I have a witness here? And so today, today I have decided that the only person that can bring me out and keep me out is Jesus. I wish I had a co-sign in the house on today. Tatum, why Jesus? Because I read where he said, once I set you free, you are free indeed. That means I'm not going back. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going back. Do I have a witness here? The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It shall set you free. So Jesus gives me this notion. Jesus gives me this assurance and insurance that once I bring you out, you'll never go back again. And I, I just wonder on today, is there anybody here today that once you come out of your situation, you plan to go back? Because if you plan to go back, you're in the wrong place. I know a man from Galilee that can set you free. And when he sets you free, you'll never go back again and that's that's why I plan to get my praise on today because I realize that once I come out I'm never going back again and so today I've come to say goodbye to some stuff today I've come to say sayonara today I've come to say hasta luego today I've come to say get out of Dodge I've, I've come to tell some stuff you got to go because Jesus is in the house Oh, I need you to know he's in the house on today. How do you know? Because there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place on today. There is healing in this place on today. There is deliverance.
that's on this place on today. And there is an exodus in this place on today. So my brothers and sisters, the only question I've got to ask you on today is are you willing to come out? Because see, I realize that sometimes we can get comfortable being where we are. And God wants to move us from where we are to where God is planning on us going. Help me somebody. So today I want to appeal not to your emotional side because sometimes we come to church and we get all emotional. I need you to think on today. Tell your neighbor, think on today. I need you to think on today, my brothers and my sisters. You've got Jesus in the house. Think about this now. And Jesus is asking you a question that does not require a heart response, but rather it requires a mind response. Do you want to come out of your mess? That, that's pretty much what he's saying. Are you tired of all the drama? Are you tired of running on the treadmill of life and not going any place? Are you tired of folks hating on you? Are you tired of folks conniving and scheming and backbiting and stabbing you and kissing you at the same time? Jesus said, I can bring you out today, but you've got to make a decision that you want to be out of it. So Jesus is telling us, my brother and sister says, your faith, your faith is a logical, if you will, choice. Watch this now, because faith requires illogical thinking. <laughs> Let me say that again. Jesus says that your faith, which is logical, requires illogical thinking. Oh, let me see if I can give you a witness, if you will. Y'all remember the woman that had the issue of blood, and the record is for 12 years that she had gone from doctor to doctor, from person to person. Everybody gave her their own little cure. You know, everybody got their own little cure. Well, just take a shot of gin and a shot of this, and you'll be all right. That didn't work. After she got drunk quite enough, she realized, I guess I need to try something. Help me, somebody up in the place on today. And so she went from doctor to doctor, and she went from place to place, and nobody could heal her, and they had taken all of her money. But then the record is that she made a logical choice. She, she heard that Jesus was in the place, and she made her mind up, and here it is. It just blew my mind. A Reverend Moore, she made a logical choice to go to Jesus, but then she used some illogical thinking because she said, listen, I don't have to touch Jesus. I just need to touch the H-E-M of the H-I-M. Oh, Lord, I wish I could get somebody that could help me on today. If I could touch the H-E-M of the H-I-M, I shall be made whole. That, that's what you call illogical thinking, but it makes logical sense. Help me, somebody in the place on today. And so the woman went to Jesus and her blood, the issue of blood was healed instantly. That's blind Bartimaeus. We talked about him just a while ago. Blind Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside begging for money. And the record is when he heard that Jesus was in town, that Jesus was passing by, a blind man could see that Jesus could heal him. That's illogical. It's illogical. How could a blind man see that the blind y'all 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 missing it? You're missing it. You're missing it. How could a blind man see that Jesus could heal him? Here he is. He goes to Jesus. He's been blind, and we don't know how long he's been blind. But the record is that he said, "Jesus said, what do you want?" He said that I may see. Help me, somebody. Jesus, he went to Jesus. It was logical, but he makes an illogical choice, but he made it based on his faith in God. The Bible says your faith has made the whole. I wonder, is there anybody today that feels like doing some stuff that your mind doesn't recognize? I wonder, is there anybody here that's addicted to something and you've been trying all your life to try to figure out a solution? That's the logical side. But Jesus says we walk by faith and not by sight. That's the illogical side. I don't see it, but I believe it's already on the way. And you're shouting, my brothers and sisters, you're shouting is a witness to your testimony. I don't know how Jesus is going to do it, but Jesus is going to get me out of this mess. Tell your neighbor, he getting me out of it. I don't know how, I don't know when, and I don't know why, but I know it's on the way. Tell your neighbor it's on the way. So my brother and my sister, I need to appeal to the mind today to make a logical decision, but think illogically by faith. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, I believe it is 7, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't need to see it. I just believe in the person that gave me the promise. I wonder, is there anybody in the place on today that has the promise? Help me, somebody. Is there anybody that Jesus has promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake?